Half in the bag. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay, looking good. Looking good. Looking good, Jay. Almost there. So did you get it working? Almost, almost. All right. It's a good thing I found this. Hopefully we could watch some TV before we freeze to death. Yeah, we only have one movie left from that Chris Kringle guy. Hey, why don't we go over to his place? It's probably warm there. Oh, it's cold outside. It's cold in here. That's a fair point. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. It looks like a show's coming in. Oh. Something's starting. What is it? Oh, is this the episode where Lenny and Squiggy accidentally set off a thermonuclear warhead? No. Jay, I think this is for real. What? Whoa! Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Whoa. What's happening? Oh my God, I was just in the attic trying to hang myself when I heard this huge explosion. I looked outside and there's devastation everywhere. What? What are you talking about? Oh my God, he's right, Jay. It's worldwide nuclear war. I guess we're safe because we're the only ones up on Mount Everest, the highest point in the whole wide world. Oh, well, at least there's that. Well, we're just gonna be the three of us left. We better start figuring out who gets to be the front of the daisy chain. Not it. Not it. And also, I get to be Caboose. Oh, shit. You do know that we're just gonna die of cancer from the nuclear fallout anyway, right? What do I give a shit? I was just about to hang myself in the attic. I'm gonna go get the lube. Well, I guess before I get fucked in the ass by Mr. Plinkett and die of radiation-induced cancer, we should watch one more film. Now, you said you had one from Mr. Kringle. Sure. What was the movie? Zoolander 2. Oh, shit. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's Deadpool. Oh! Oh. No, I'm just kidding. It's Ride Along 2. Oh, fuck. No, I'm just kidding. It's Deadpool. Oh! It really is Deadpool? Well, it's the Dirty Harry sequel, Deadpool, where Jim Carrey lip syncs to Guns N' Roses. You're probably thinking, this was a superhero movie, but that guy in the suit just turned that other guy into a fucking kebab. Surprise, this is a different kind of superhero story. Deadpool is a labor of love from world-renowned comic book expert, Ryan Reynolds. The film tells the story of Wade Wilson, a guy who spends half the movie on a freeway overpass, explaining via flashbacks how he got on the overpass. The film also stars Marina Baccarin, T.J. Miller, and Ed Screen as supporting characters that stand around while Deadpool makes pop culture references in their faces. Hey everyone, remember the Spice Girls? Mike, what did you think of Deadpool? Well, by your sassy intro, I'm gonna take it you didn't like Deadpool. No, I liked it just fine. Uh, well, I, I was wondering, I mean, you're asking me if I like Deadpool. I was wondering if uh, the six and eight year old uh, <laughs> children that came into the theater liked Deadpool and if their mother liked herself for taking her little boys to see Deadpool. Warning, this is not a superhero film. This is the most violent R-rated film I've seen in a while. It, it's a vulgar pop culture heavy comedy, uh, kind of Kevin Smith-like except much more competent and exciting. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the, the constant references to pop culture, uh, which I got tired of pretty quickly. Um, I know that's a part of the Deadpool character. That's kind of his thing. But mm -hmm. I think l less frequently and more like precision ones would have made them be, made them funnier if it was used a little bit less. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Reynolds was teetering on annoying for the first 30 minutes, but all the other parts in it made up for it. And I started to really enjoy it towards the end. 
Um, and you, you, I, I mean, this movie is what it is. It's it, it's very different though, and it's um. It's it's a movie. I, I I thought it was okay. I liked it well enough. I wasn't in love with it, but I'm glad that it was as successful as it was opening weekend. Because hopefully that sends a sign that people want to see things that are different. Yeah. This, this is somewhat the same, but different. That's um, that's the big that's the big takeaway from this. It's not so much like another Marvel successful Marvel movie. It's like they took a big risk with this. Yes. Um, Ryan Reynolds, I guess, like was really pushing for this, and then he purposely leaked the test footage so that the fans would get excited about it, and and that's like, eh. and then what what a risk to take with the the clean cut Marvel franchise making an R-rated superhero movie. And then it's the biggest R-rated movie opening ever. It took in like two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, nobody was expecting that. It's kind of kind of crazy. It's it's and it's, it's not even huge. just like a because I think back to you know the the olden days when you'd have movies like RoboCop and mm -hmm. you know, Terminator and all these R R rated movies that were really popular, but one that's this sort of irreverent and not. I mean, it's a mainstream movie in the sense mm -hmm. that it's a Marvel movie, it's a comic book movie, but I mean, you're not going to see uh, Chris Evans get pegged by his girlfriend with a strap on in Captain America. If I never see you again, know that I love you. When I'm finished, your mutated cells will heal anything. But you still think we're making you a superhero. We're making you a super slave. Oh, come on. Are you going to leave me all alone here with Jose Canseco? I was reading an article about Deadpool's success, and you know, when Hollywood smells money, all sorts of things begin to happen. And it was very, it's, it's very reminiscent of how successful the Nolan Batman movies were, where everything took, took a dark turn. Yeah. And so whoever wrote this article um, was basically like, uh, Marvel's reevaluating. This person's reevaluating, and and there's talk of uh, Fantastic Four, a third reboot, oh, where it's going to get a hard R rating. Of course, they're talking about uh, they're like starting to dig through piles of comics. There's like guys in suits just like throwing comics. <laughs> Look, what's the weirdest, most fucked up comic we could find? Yep. I guarantee you, Lobo's coming. Lobo. Lobo. You know what I would like to see? And Spawn's being remade, I'm sure, so now. Spawn, all... you can do that as an R. That's appropriate for an R, though. And that's the takeaway. I think James Gunn wrote something about this, too, where he's yes. saying, like, don't take the wrong thing away from this movie's success. Mm -hmm. Like, not every comic book movie now has to be violent R-rated. People want it like Deadpool because it was something different. Exactly, yeah. It, it doesn't have to follow this exact formula and mm -hmm. be vulgar and violent and filthy. They just wanted something different, uh -oh. something that was different and fun. Nope, but uh, here comes Mr. Magoo and a heart with a har R rating. <laughs> and uh, you know what? You, you, James Gunn is completely right. Mm -hmm. But uh, Deadpool took a risk, and it paid off. And it paid off because it took a risk. Yes. Now, the, but but it's like lemmings, like jumping off the cliff. Mm -hmm. and, and so it, it's going to happen, whether you like it or not, or whether it's appropriate or not. It didn't matter that Superman is not appropriate for a dark, gritty, Christopher Nolan-esque reboot. That's what we got. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was successful. So then we get more like that. I noticed with the, have you seen the recent Suicide Squad trailer? No. <laughs> Let's save the world. Where it's it's set to Queen, it's set to Bohemian Rhapsody, and I was thinking of the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer. Mm -hmm. Now it's set to like a 70s song, and it's like, oh, now they're doing that. So, mm, get ready. Hard R superhero films are coming, and this is just confusing. It's going to cause a horrible amounts of confusion and problems. Like, I felt bad for the little kids, because I'm sure parents are confused as shit. <laughs> you, you see Deadpool, he looks like, you know, a different Marvel character. You got Wolverine. Wolverine yeah. is a man with, with fucking claws on his hand that stabs people. But X-Men's okay for kids. They've tried though. They've been really clever with the marketing for this movie. Where they're trying to, they're not trying to trick anybody, which is nice too. Well, All the marketing for this movie has been very straightforward, which is kind of refreshing. Yeah, but I mean like, People slip through the cracks. They don't see that. Ah, that's see their that. own dumbass fault. Yeah. Yeah. And some people, some it's parents, for the kids. You got to think of the children. Hey, I saw RoboCop when I was six, and it was the most amazing movie ever. Yeah, and you turned out all right. I turned out just fine. Is he gonna explode? Yeah! 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 
<laughs> and this is coming from the man who told me after we shot that you had an erection the entire time we watched Exploding Varmints. And that you said, you know that scene from American Pie? Think of that with a, a varmint carcass. And that was you last night. That's what he told me. No, he's moving! He said the trick is to do it right after it's dead because it's still warm. I well, I think that's pretty much common sense. Yeah. Even if you don't want to fuck a gopher carcass. I, I, that, that's, just, if you're gonna fuck a carcass of anything, you want it still to be warm. Mm -hmm. That goes without saying. Not that I've put any thought into it. Whatever they did to me made me totally indestructible and completely no. Unfuckable. You you look like the inside of other people's assholes. Now we, we've talked about the circumstances surrounding the movie. I guess we haven't talked too much about the actual movie. Uh, I didn't think it was all that funny. There are certain parts where I laughed. I, I, I laughed at certain parts. I liked the, the references to the comic book universe and the X-Men. There's mm -hmm. lots of jokes at the expense of like Hugh Jackman. At one point they say Patrick Stewart looks like the, the Heaven's Gate guy. Like things like that that are sort of in a world. The, the, I thought were clever in a way we're just like referencing, I don't know, Rosie O'Donnell isn't. Yeah, that certain there are certain jokes that seemed a little dated and 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 stuff. Um, but there was fourth wall breaking and then Deadpool references that and he yeah. looks directly in the camera. He's like, is that breaking the fourth wall or I'm breaking four walls and at the same time, is that eight walls? And yeah, yeah. you know, they were completely aware. There's one part where uh, Colossus shows up and starts dragging Deadpool. He's like, you're coming to the Xavier mansion to join the X-Men. And he's like, he's like, which, uh, which Professor Xavier is oh, it? Yeah. Stewart or McAvoy? <laughs> and it's like- These timelines are so confusing. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> He's referencing the actors, and it's completely fourth wall breaking, and, and then it was fine. That, that stuff's funny because uh, everybody feels that way at this point. It's, yeah. it's almost commenting on superhero fatigue, as yes. we mentioned. Yes, it is. And, and there's lots of references to the formulas, too, like especially the opening credits, where it's just like, oh, yeah. You know, starring it a hot like chick, a, 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 a British bad guy. Comic relief sidekick. Comic relief, so yeah. CGI character. So he, he, they're making fun of the formula and the, the universe mm -hmm. in which it comes from. But it's nice to see uh, him decapitating people. And, <laughs> but it's, it's certainly not a superhero film. It's a super violent, crazy vigilante film. Yes. And that's, I would say, that this is going into the negatives, is that, like, I understand we always talk about all these comic book movies, the ending is they have to save the entire city, and there's mm -hmm. the blue light going up into the sky and all that, and this avoids that almost going too far in the other direction, where there's not really much of a story here. The first half of the movie is told in a kind of non-linear fashion to kind of, like, distract you from how little is actually going on, because the actual story is really simple and not terribly interesting or unique. The style and the humor is unique, Yeah. but the story is just a guy turns him into a monster and then he wants revenge on that guy. Yeah, well, that's what I liked about it though, was like, that's just the basic outline. That's sure. just the framework and then they have fun with all the details. And I like the fact that Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead were in it. I, well, I'm not familiar with that character at I, all. I, I know Colossus, of course. I, I, I looked this up, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead is a character from, I think, the, the New Mutants, some like very current X-Men comic. Okay. Uh, I, I want to say that they probably did that as a joke to find the most obscure mm. X-Men character they could. <laughs> I mean, I googled it and I could barely find any co uh, comic book images of this character. Okay. My guess is that he, Ryan Reynolds or whoever wrote this, um, I know he was heavily involved in the writing of it. Yeah. Said, let's have Colossus in there and and uh, the most obscure X Men possible just for laughs. Yeah. And then it's funny because they they reference that he goes to the mansion and you know, she answers the door, and it's always them two, and he's like, yes, for the, such a big mansion with all these characters, <laughs> you think uh, the studio's getting cheap, you know, or, or couldn't afford more characters. I yeah. mean, that's, that's probably true. Right. We'll let you use Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> Who's and, great in this, by the way? It's it's complete schlock with Colossus. Yeah. Oh, I he's love, got this that's how like, Colossus, cartoon voice. And, that's how Colossus should be. Yeah. I, I, and then, you know, and there's another mutant woman who has super strength, and she, she fights Colossus, and that's, uh, practically beats him, mm -hmm. which is awesome. <laughs> and I like the, it felt like um, 
it felt like just some off issue of a comic book. Yeah. And and while the Marvel movies, the, the Avengers, the greatest, the biggest event in all the battle, this felt like issue number 385. <laughs> Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead help Deadpool kill this guy. My favorite scenes were with Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yeah. Sure. Where the, the, <laughs> you needed that, you needed Colossus in there. Yeah. I mean, it seems so out of place that it worked. Yeah. It's just like, oh, there's well, a cartoony and... X-Men character in here. And right. he's so like, he's like the, the straight, narrow, virtuous, like, uh, uh, you must do the right thing. You know, and, he, and it was a very good counterbalance to Deadpool. Yeah. That's why the, those, the scenes with those two were fun. Classic comic book archetype character and then yes, Deadpool. Yes, yeah, yeah. And when it needs to be an action comic book movie, that stuff works too. Like a lot of the action towards the end, like the fighting stuff, mm -hmm. I thought that was fun. That was great. Without, you know, needing any wacky jokes or anything, just the action stuff was fine. Yeah, yeah. Taking the piss out of comic book movies, but at the same time making a really good comic book movie. Hmm? I mean, that's why I brought her? Oh no, finish your tweet. It's not, it, that's fine, just give us a second. Go get her, Tiger. Oh, I so pity the dude who pressures her into prom sex. Isn't it a shame that you can't just watch a movie, like this type of movie now, and just be like, that was an entertaining movie. You just have to think of, like, because the way they've set up these franchises and these uh, connected universes, all you gotta think is like, fuck, now we gotta deal with 20 more of these. Well, they, they, they are franchises. They are not, not just franchises. They are empires. There are multiple franchises that you can connect into another franchise. There are and then... multiple corporate conglomerates. <laughs> It's, uh, it's... And that's why it's all the more amazing that this got made. I guess under, uh, uh, whoever used to run Fox that was sort of like ashamed of the X-Men, things like that, he was very opposed to this Deadpool movie being made, which is why it kept getting pushed off for years and years. That guy left Fox, this movie gets made, and it's like the highest grossing mm -hmm. thing ever. Like, let people take chances. Was that the guy who, uh, who, uh greenlit the original Deadpool played by Ryan Reynolds? Probably, probably. For those of you who don't remember, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds was also Deadpool, Wade Wilson, in one of my favorite movies of all time, X-Men Origins Wolverine, the direct-to-video film. <laughs> from the Ann Arbor District Library. From the Ann That's actually the company that produced the this, film. Yeah, the Ann Arbor, Michigan District Library produced Wolverine <laughs> uh, X-Men Origins. There he is. And uh, yeah, Ryan Reynolds is in it as, as um, <laughs> Wade Wilson, who has two swords, and he's probably, uh, obviously Ryan, Ryan Reynolds was, or is, a Deadpool fan, a big Deadpool fan. He's like, yes. yeah, let me play Deadpool. And then Deadpool in this version of it is, I don't know if it says he has cancer or he just dies, and they, or they just kidnap him, and he, he gets um, the guy, uh, Brian Cox, his younger self, um, I think he puts all mutant powers into him. Yeah, and I know he, becomes, he has like he has Cyclops', Cyclops eyes. laser eyes. Um, he has the Wolverine healing ability, and I think he has adamantium sword arms. And Wolverine and Sabretooth fight him on top of a nuclear furnace at the end. Isn't his mouth sewn shut his for some reason? Shut, Is there an explanation for that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. A character that's known for being a smart ass with lots of quips and his mouth. Oh, sewn that's why shut? they show so his mouth shut. Oh, to because shut Because he is quippy and irritating. Stuck in an elevator with five guys on a high protein diet. Oh, wait. Dreams really do come true. So just shut it. Okay, I don't and, remember. And I think that is why, mm. um, from what I remember. Yeah, because he, he kept talking and babbling. Okay. Kind of like the Deadpool character. And then I think they saw his mouth shut because of that. <laughs> but, um, yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the other comic book films that are coming out this year. That's right, Jay. What other comic book films are coming out in 2016? Oh, and boy. And 2017 and 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, They released a teaser trailer for Star Wars Episode Eight. Oh, God. Get Come Beautiful. Are you excited yet? Oh, my God. Did you see the way Luke's <laughs> hair was parted? That means... <laughs> I just want to kill myself. Uh, it's understandable. Movies make me want to be dead. 
Anyways, uh, comic book movies slated for 2016. Go. Uh, well, first we've got Captain America, Civil War. Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justices. Doctor Strange in November. Doctor Strange Love. Doctor Strange Love, they're remaking that, but they're turning it into an action comic book movie. How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Fantastic Four. Think about oh, it for a second. Think about it. Well, there's a Ninja Turtles movie coming out that's sort of borderline comic booky. Uh, man children are very excited because Krang is in it. Oh, the brain is a Because 37 year old men should be excited that Krang is in their Turtles movie. They didn't do Krang right. <laughs> What were the what were the, the the muscle characters' name? Like one was like a rhinoceros. And... Oh, Bebop and Rocksteady, they're in the new movie. How do you know that? Because I was a Ninja Turtle kid. I was too, but I don't remember their names. I remember I their names, them. but I'm not excited to see them in a new motion picture aimed at eight-year-olds. X-Men Apocalypse is coming out. Oh. Which I can't even imagine taking any of this shit seriously after Deadpool. This is like the death of comic book movies. Yes, Deadpool killed the comic it, book franchise. It's a big franchise. old uh, whoopee cushion on the seat of, of the comic book movie industry. Yeah, it's a, it's a very clever analogy, Jay. A big old whoopee cushion on the, under the butt of Hollywood executives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, Apocalypse, I'm like... Apocalypse is so awesome, and then I'm much thrilled. Oh my God. Is it Oscar Isaac? Is he playing uh -huh, Apocalypse? Uh -huh. That's unfortunate. I'm sure the movie will be fine. <laughs> Why? He's a great actor. He is, a, but that's what I mean. Like he is a good actor. He'll do a great job. Okay. It's, it's frustrating because like I want to like uh, there's that comic book fatigue that we talk about, but then you still have to judge a movie on a movie by movie basis. Yeah. And a lot of them turn out to be good. Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Like I don't care about Captain America, but that Winter Soldier movie was, was really good. good movie, yeah. Civil War, I think, looks good. Uh, Batman vs Superman. Uh, they don't know what to do with it. You, you were telling me you read something about that, right? I did. I read that um, they're actually worried about it, and and this is a little condescending to the Marvel fans. They're worried about it because they think it might be too smart for Marvel fans. Yeah, because Man of Steel was too smart. Well, apparently this Serious one, does not mean smart. I, and and I, in a way, when I, I look at it, I kind of I kind of agree, sort of. Mm. Not, not that it's going to be too smart for audiences, but that it deals with bigger themes. It seems to, anyway, from the trailer. You yeah. know, like the, there's a, a godlike character and like what are the repercussions on earth like what you know and and it seems to be a little more a little more heady than apocalypse is going to destroy everyone we've got to yeah. stop them like the the big theme stuff or i don't know it's possible it'll be dumb punching and and smashing the whole time but it also seems like it's trying to deal with not just Superman as just this like I'm gonna go save the world, but more of a like what would happen if there was like basically a man who could do anything yeah. on modern day Earth. I but, think that's but where is ta is taking that idea and putting it into a Superman movie is that the right venue to tell a story like that? Absolutely not. Do you bleed? Do you bleed? Well, you will. <laughs> And I don't understand that Captain America Civil War. To me, it seems like uh, Iron Man should be the one who is like the vig vigilante who runs off on his own and does his own shit. I, I was like, thinking that, yeah. He's like the it's, billionaire playboy and he's like, fuck all this like rules. And, and then he's like, you gotta follow the rules. But he's my friend. So was I. So that, that sounds like something Captain America would say to Iron Man. Exactly, yeah. I mean, it, maybe it makes sense. I'm sure it makes sense in the context of the movie, but I, I agree. It feels like those characters should be reversed I, it's completely in Completely inverted. Captain America is a soldier. A soldier follows the rules. Yeah. And he's the clean-cut guy, not the reckless vigilante who runs around and uh, doesn't want to follow the rules. That's Tony Stark. I liked that Winter Soldier movie quite a bit. That's one that I think stands out as far as being something different. And that's why it's hard to get too like beat down on the Marvel stuff. Like it, you can look at the overall trend and it gets like 
tiresome. Mm -hmm. But a few years ago, the idea that there would be this, this cinematic universe where we would have all these characters that we set up in individual movies and then they'll start to interconnect, like, that's ambitious. And then the fact that all these movies have different tones and then you bring them together and you make, you know, the best elements of all those different franchises work together. But then you see those graphs where it's like 2016, here's every movie. 2017, mm -hmm. here's every movie. And you're like, oh, fuck. It seems to be like they, they made their master plans and as master plans go, sometimes awry. Sure. And, and it's like, now I think DC was like worried about this Batman versus Superman movie. So they're, they're pushing back Justice League a little bit. And to, then, to what, retool what they want to do with it? Well, or? I think they're worried that it's going to have a negative fan reaction because they think that Marvel fans, which, you know, I, I mean, there's Marvel and DC. I think the, the general movie going, going audience doesn't care. Right. They're just like superhero movie. Uh, I think they're so accustomed to the, the big, colorful, fun Marvel movies that when they go see this, they're just going to go, oh, I have a headache. Yeah, Man of Steel might have just been like an anomaly. Right. And, and so I think they're, they're pushing that back. They're going to do a Ben Affleck Batman solo movie. And then kind of like, oh, let's slowly yeah. work all this in. Uh, Batman versus Superman looks a little nauseating to me. And it looks, it's giving me like uh, post-traumatic stress dis disorder from, uh, from Man of Steel. Yeah. But if, it's, if it tries to have big themes, tries to do something smart and uh, works, uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be okay with it. But I think it may have a negative effect on audiences. Mm. We'll see. We can't allow this, Deadpool. I don't have time for your X-Men bullshit, Colossus. Besides, nobody's getting hurt. That guy was up there before we got here. Do you bleed? You will. <laughs> but Mike, what did you think of Deadpool? Would you recommend it? Ah, uh, absolutely. As the, we mentioned before, don't take any children to see it, but go see it. It's fun to watch an R-rated film. It's fun to see decapitations, blood, gore, violence, nudity, and to hear the F word over and over and over and over and over again. And to have some, some sick, sick, perverted, dark humor. Everyone's scared of all that now. Yeah. But it's, it's been proven that audiences are, are out there and want to watch R-rated movies. So yeah. fuck you. Even more so than just R-rated movies. I would recommend it too, but you almost don't have to because apparently everybody saw it already. The whole world saw it over the weekend, yeah. including the little children. But uh, yeah, as long as the, and this won't happen, but I wish the takeaway from this is that people are open to things that are different, movies that are different, movies that take chances, not necessarily just that they're like hard R movies. They don't even have to be hard R, just movies that are trying to do something unique. I want to see Rich Evans recommended Planet Hulk. Oh yeah. Where Hulk gets banished to an alien planet and becomes their god. <laughs> yeah. And just wants to come back to kick uh, Iron Man's ass. <laughs> or whoever banished him. I think it was Iron Man or Thor. I don't remember what he said. But no one has to team up to save the planet. They're just pissed off at each other. Yeah, and there's some fun story. Some yeah. different story. I, I, I'm, um, we're tired of the blue laser in the sky. Yes. And even though this one had, had um, a lot of uh, cliches, you know, save the girl, gotta get the bad guy, you know. Even though it had all those cliches in it, there were a lot of like oddball elements. Mainly the introduction of, of two random X-Men characters in it <laughs> for fun. And that's what you want in movies, you wanna have fun. So everyone get your tickets for Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Darkness. I'm sure this will resonate. $250 million in four days is like a shockwave. Yes. And uh, it certainly will resonate, especially depending on how the rest of the superhero movie on that does.